Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 12 of the Nova Notes podcast, where we hold different types of VR creators, content creators, and many more amazing people inside of the platform. I'm your host, Nova and Player, and with me today, I have a VR chat content creator, Mr. King Roy Aiko. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, how's it going? I'm happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So for those that, you know, don't know who you are, kind of give a brief explanation of what exactly do you do on this platform? Well, I do kind of a mixture of everything. I love VR chat videos. I love like going around goofing off. I love messing with avatars, exploring worlds and just making fun of other people. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say, you know, with with that in mind, you know, you you've been doing VR chat creation for roughly about two years, I would say, uh, from what I did a little research. So, what was one of the big things that drove you to you know what before I even go into like what creations inspired uh, inspired you? What inspired you to come to VR chat in the first place? I'm not gonna lie with you. I used to play this game called Unison League. It's like a mobile game on your phone. And one of the game's core fundamentals is, like, you get a guild of people, you get together, you all, like, do quests and stuff. It was really cool. But what I realized was I didn't really care about the game itself. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was complete garbage, and I got carried. But, like, I didn't care about the game. I just like talking and, like, hanging out with my friends. And then quarantine hit with all the COVID. <laughs> and I was stuck in my room, and I had, like, nothing to do besides my headset. And then I discovered VR chat, and then it just stumbled into here we are today. Fair enough. Yeah, and it seems like a it seems like a lot of people like mainly started maintaining VR chat as their main platform after COVID hit. Um, you know, it definitely was a great time, you know, to do so. You know, being stuck inside all the time and whatnot. Um, so you know, yeah. you're talking about Unison League. You know, so what exactly is, and this is someone for, who's very uncultured, what exactly is Unison League? And, like, what made you want to create videos on it? I'm going to be real with you. Unison League is a gar... No, I'm kidding. Unison League is, like, a game where you get a group of people, you go on missions together, you get loot. It's really pay to win. Like, I want to express that. It is truly pay to win at its finest. But what's cool about it is I met one of my best friends from there. And then we built, like, a bond. We'd go do guilds. We'd do a lot of things together. And it's just, like, a loot road kind of, like, game. Okay, fair enough. So it's one of those, like, gotcha, like, one of those gotcha game type games, kind of. I gotcha. Yes. So, so you know... With with COVID being you know, one of the main things that kind of pushed you to VR chat, you know, what inspired you to start making like actual content using the platform? <laughs> so pretty much, um, I had uh, I knew a friend who used to do like videos, but he never posted on YouTube. He would just record them. He wouldn't edit it, and I'd watch it. And I'm like, oh my god, that's really funny. So then back then, all I had was just a quest. So I would record like quest videos. I'd post it on YouTube. I have this video called Finn the Fox. Completely bad video. Like I am not proud of it in the slightest. But if it wasn't for that video, I feel like it wouldn't have made me want to keep posting more videos and want to get better because I'm very like competitive. So my friend and I would we would make competition where it's like, oh yeah, I learned how to like cut clips and add green screen. My friend would be like, oh yeah, I learned how to do audio in this. And I'm just like, whoa, okay, let's see what I can learn. And it just kept going just like that, learning new things to impress each other. He unfortunately stopped making videos and like, we're not as close as we are right now. But like, if it wasn't for like that friend, that's like, yeah, you could do this, man. Encouraging you, I probably... I still would make videos, but they just wouldn't be as good as they are, I'd say right now. Fair enough. Yeah, no, it definitely helps to have friends who, you know, push you to become better as a content creator. Um, so speaking of, you know, friends and stuff, you know, I'm no I've noticed uh, a lot of videos that you do, you know, you'll have a group of multiple people, you know. So do you go to like public lobbies and just find people or do you have like a set friend group for recordings? Like, kind of kind of explain me, like, the due process of that. I'm going to be honest with you. For the last three videos I've made, 
I I ran into a problem, right? I had a lot of good ideas, but I didn't have the people with me to execute it. And I'm very like shy. Kind of, I, I never got it. I like to think I'm outgoing, but when it comes to like finding people for videos, I get shy. So then besides like asking some of my friends, would you like to participate in this? And like some of them owing me a favor because I beat them in pool, you know, pool champion. But like I used to use this app called ePals, funny enough. I would get on there, I'd pitch an idea, I'd be like, yo, I'll pay you whatever rates you want, just come join my idea. And then it went from like them being like an associate or just someone I'm paying to like genuine friendships. But a lot of it is a mixture of just like people I meet in funny worlds and we just build connections and just like other sites that I use just to get people together. And then over time, they like doing the content and just ask to be a part of it more. I'm just like, sure, I don't mind. Fair enough. Fair enough. So you, you said you uh, you hired people uh, using this ePals. Uh, I'm not I'm uncultured when it comes to this type of thing. Um, but so ex explain to me like how. Give me more in depth on like how you like hired people on. So what I would do, <laughs> I would go up to like, so the website pretty much is set up where like you can message people, whatever you want. And then they'll like give you their rates or like what they do or whatever. And you can like see it on their bio. I would go to them like, Hey, I'm doing a video. I need you to do a, B and C. Is that okay? And they're like, yeah, sure. Just like, let me know when and I'm down. I'm like, perfect. Some people, of course, weren't like okay with it, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, not everyone's gonna be happy with the things you do, but like the people that were are now like besties. Like we text on Discord. It's no longer like a e pal. I'm paying you, blah blah blah. I'm your boss now. You must respect me, kind of thing. Now it's more like a yo. You want to record? Heck yeah, I do. Bah, kind of thing. Hell yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's really cool that, you know, you, gr they grown from essentially associates to friends. That's really, that's really cool. That's what's up. Um, so, you know, as, as a content creator, you know, in general, did you ever expect to, to grow as much as you did? I feel like a lot of people are like, nah, do you never expected it at all? But I'm not going to lie with you. Yes. And no, yes, because like, I feel like I always believe if you put in enough hard work and dedication, you'll get what you want eventually. And then no is in like, I really went from making Minecraft like pocket edition screen records on an iPhone 5 to now VR content doing cash prizes for people. Like, I did not think it would go this far. Like, I looked at my channel back then and like, I'm like, bro, I'm at. 200 subs i'm making minecraft content like i wonder what my future is going to look like fast forward or three years later now i'm doing vr content i reached a thousand and like i could not be happier i love it i love the direction i'm just like excited to see what happens next like if i keep doing vr chat that's cool if i go to another game that's nice i just want to keep doing youtube it's like everything i have pretty much Fair enough. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, it's, it's great to hear that, you know, you're over a thousand subs, you know, on YouTube, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, not, not an easy feat to say the least, you know, I mean, sh shoot, as we're recording this, I don't even think I've still hit 110 subscribers. So I understand what it's like to, you know, start from scratch. <laughs> It'll throw yeah. a bell enough. Yeah, yeah, I better sub. But yeah, so speaking of you know kind of growing as a creator you know obviously there probably at some point was some internal struggles you know what were what were some of the internal struggles specifically when it came to vr creation like content creation you know what were some of the struggles you may have dealt Ooh. with uh you know when starting out till now i was waiting for this question i've been wanting to say this for a very long time so every single VR chat video, besides the um, the one I made with the full body, not full body, sorry, bodyguard videos, every single one of those VR chat videos I have on my channel, I recorded them around four to five to six in the morning. I live with six, no, sorry, seven other people in this house. And the only way I can record VR chat videos is not during the day. They all have to be asleep so I can plug in my 60 foot land cable to the basement to the third floor of our house. So every single video on my channel 
is probably recorded around four, five, two in the morning. I do not sleep at all. Like I get no sleep. I probably sleep like four hours a day every day. It's it's not really something that. Well, I enjoy it now, but back then I was like, I, I'm tired. <laughs> but like it's just, I feel like it's passion because like eventually, of course, you know. If I get blessed, like I would love to move out, have my router closer so I can record during the day, make more content. But that's, that's pretty much been like my only initial struggle. Like I can't really record during the day because like too many people around and the cable breaks. I, my soul is gone. But like it's, it's definitely been a struggle for sure. Everything else is just like me dependent. Like I feel like if I had any issues with camera or OBS or any of that, it really does fall on me and I'd have to fix it myself. Like there's never nothing that I feel like I can't fix besides the cable thing. Like I, I truly, I ran out of ideas there. I can only really record it like late nights and it's not as bad, but it's still just kind of like, you know, I would love to record it during the day and actually take a nap at night kind of thing. No, that's fair. Yeah, that definitely. Yeah. That, I couldn't imagine doing four to six a.m. recordings. I, I'd be dead. As somebody who works at eight a.m. on Monday through Friday basis, no, bro. I, mm. yeah, could Dude, not. Dude, and dead. having a job and babysitting, like it. I don't want. I don't like people to feel sorry for me. I don't want that to come across that at all. Don't feel sorry for me. Make fun of me. But like, it's definitely a lot of things, bro. No, I get that. I get that. You know, um, so, you know, let's kind of delve into this a little bit more, you know, so you said it was a, a 64 foot cable, you know, uh, first of all, I, I'm curious as to how in the hell you found that type of cable <laughs> because I, because I Bro, need one. I, need... Um... <laughs> I found it. Um, I was like talking to my friend about this problem. He's like, bro, there's this Amazon link. I'll send it to you. He's like, I was like, cool. What is it? He's like, this is like a 30 to 60 foot cable. It's going to be like 20 or 30 bucks. I threw my money at him, told him to order it and it came and I haven't been happier since. Fair enough. No, that's <laughs> God. I couldn't even imagine like even a 16 foot cable for like my headset seems long, but having a 64 foot cable for the granted that would work perfectly for me. Cause I could just route it through the, my ceiling and then just over um, into my room for like my actual recordings and stuff, which would be phenomenal. But yeah, you said I it goes you with the link. Don't <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, no, <laughs> but, but you said, uh, you said it goes through like three floors. Is that right? Is that what you said? Yep. It goes from, because I live in a three-story house, so it goes from the basement, crawls up the stairs into the second floor, and then crawls up another pair of stairs into my room. Like, if you were to see outside my room right now, it looks like a fireman pole. You can, like, grab it and slide down like your Tarzan. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so, you know, we're, you, were, you were saying about, like, the camera and OBS issues um for you specifically what's like one of the most common issues when it comes to recording stuff with vr chat um man i don't know if this is like a quest exclusive problem because right now i'm on quest but i'm also having looked into a cable for some weird reason when i like hit my headset turn it on plug everything in it's a it's like a literally 50 50 toss-up where sometimes i would open vr chat and I would have zero audio at all. And my OBS wouldn't turn on. It's literally like a coin flip. I would have to restart my PC twice just to get it working. I had to do that today, funny enough, just to come here. Because there's times where like I would turn it on, everything sounds good, you hear all the blinks, and ready to go, pal. And then it just like cuts off and I don't hear no audio. OBS is like dark, you don't see anything. But once I reset it, everything fixes itself. So funny enough, um, and this is actually a good tip for all you VR chat content creators who use Quest. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this before I de delve into this. Uh, what version of Steam VR you run? Just the I'm normal, not gonna lie. Just the normal one. Yeah, just the normal one. Use the beta. Use the beta of Steam VR. It does wonders. Like I, because I used to, because you're running a Quest mm -hmm. Two, right? You said. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I granted I switched from a quest two to a quest three um because my quest two uh got waterlogged. Um so with the quest two, that was an issue I was having as well. Um one of the things is switch to the Steam VR beta. Um making sure your cable is, you know, not you know, having issues itself. Um, in that case, I would recommend like trying to charge another device with it. Um, if you have any USB C devices, um, but do- doing the Steam VR beta fixed a lot of the problems for me. Um, as for the OBS, as for the OBS audio side, that might just be OBS being OBS. Um, yeah. There's like 50 different OBSs out there, so I don't know if I'd be able to tell you exactly. Um, but with the the beta, it actually fixes a lot of the issues because um, that's actually what I'm running right now. Um, and granted, I was doing it on Quest 2 first, and I'm running Quest 3 now, but I was when I switched on my Quest 2 from Steam VR original to the beta release, million times different. Um, and mm-hmm. I still, to this day, don't know what exactly does that change, but next time you start recording definitely use the beta or at least try to um now i will say with uh the steam link for the quest app i don't know if it's fixed yet but i know there was an issue with the steam link app on quest that would be like it would deal with a bunch of issues and stuff with audio um steam vr beta fixed that too so I don't know if you use if, if you use the MetaQuest link, which is funny because actually you just updated the Oculus link to now MetaQuest link app, which I hate it. I hate the look of it, but <laughs> I'll digress. Um, you know, it's one of those things you gotta you gotta make sure everything's updated. You know, um, yeah, because I believe it was a couple nights ago or maybe two weeks ago uh, when I was recording, my entire it wouldn't connect properly. So I had to run, it's like, oh, you, you have an update for MetaQuest. I'm like, okay, cool, run it. And it got rid of the Oculus logo completely. It's now a black square with a, a white Meta logo. It's like MetaQuest link. I'm like, oh, well, shit. There goes Oculus for good now. So, <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things you just got to keep up to date on everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Steam VR beta. All you content creators out there, Steam VR beta, if you, you have issues like uh, what Roy said with the audio stuff, does it did wonders for me. Um, it's not going to be a sure, foolproof way of fixing every small little issue because it's Quest. You're going to have issues regardless. Um, it also depends on your computer yeah. as well. But that is a good way to start. Um, not to go on to a tangent of Steam VR, but... It is what it is. <laughs> we, we, we change it on the podcast. Um, but Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, as somebody who's d- made a few videos for VR chat or like on the VR chat platform, uh, is there anything from the VR chat platform that you would like to see in the future? Mm, from like VR chat alone or like VR yeah. chat videos coming to you? Like VR chat oh, alone. Like the platform is a... I want there to be more like or I don't even know if this falls on VR chat alone, but like I want them to have way more game worlds. Cause I, I love game worlds, I'm not gonna lie. That's how I spend all my days. I don't really like going to mirror worlds, never really been my thing. That falls but like on if the they creators. could just add more game worlds. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, for VR chat alone, I'm not really sure, honestly. So, I guess to mm-hmm. kind of further word the question, um, is there any types of features, uh, that you would like to see VR chat implement for, like, let's say, like stuff that could help you, uh, create content on this platform, like whether it's like camera features mm-hmm. or, um, like overall like accessibility stuff, like stuff like that um hmm. i would love for them to add like a feature where the camera itself rotates kind of i know there's like i use personally i use the vrc lens camera so i don't not too sure with the regular camera but i would love for them to be a feature where like it rotates and it locks onto you or just like whoever you would want it to lock onto i feel like that'd be badass and that would help with a lot of different recordings and angles 
Fair. I was going to say, yeah, to have it look at yourself, I know is already a feature with the uh, the behavior toggle, but to actually have it lock onto someone else, that's a whole different ball game, which would be sick to, if they eventually added one day. Literally. Um, yeah, so funny thing that you mentioned VRC Lens, because um, as you probably saw, I also use VRC Lens uh, for this podcast. Um, so I got to ask, in your personal opinion, uh, what was it like transitioning from the basic VR chat camera to the VRC lens? Oh man, bro, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie with you, <laughs> bro. Like, like when I looked it up, there was like a uh, how-to videos, and all the videos were an hour long. I had to sit there like rewatch it because I'm, I'm dumb. I'm not gonna lie, like I'm really slow. I, I hope I don't come across as like some smart individual. I'm not. I had to rewatch an hour video three times just to <laughs> learn the basics. Like I, I'm not smart at all, and like having to do all of that. At first, I hated it because I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing? But now I love it. The VRC lens camera is so nice. I feel like it looks better than what I remember from the regular camera. And there's just like a lot of features I like more about it compared to the regular one. Fair enough. Fair enough. I was like, yeah, especially when it comes to photography uh, in VR chat, it does amazing differences. I am not sponsored by VRC lens. VRC lens, if you want to sponsor me. Yeah. but no. sponsor please um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah no vsc lens is it's an amazing amazing utility device for anybody who's interested in like photography video uh content creation and etc um so one of the things that you know uh what in your opinion what was the hardest part uh about learning how to use vrc lens Oh my god, dude. The hardest part about learning VRC Lens was, I don't know, like, the names of it for sure, but, like, so, to get the drone effect, first, you would have to, like, take off or, like, use the lock-on feature, or, like, place the camera in front of you, then use the drone effect, and then move it with your other controller, and at the time, my controller had drift. So, like, mm. I would move it to the perfect spot, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got it. Let's go. And then my camera would just go. <laughs> and I'm like, no, why? It would zoom away. And I'm like, bro. But besides, like, technical difficulties on my end, the, the drone effect and then the, um, the brightness on how to, like, brighten up certain angles and then the focus part also confused me a lot. But I learned it now. But, like, at the time, it was, it was rough, man some late night watching fair enough fair enough yeah i was gonna say you know with with me personally it was definitely um oh god why can't i remember the name of it focus certain things and the the lines like the you could change the color of the lines and stuff to like show at least on yes. your visual i it took me probably a good day or two to finally figure that out i was like why is it <laughs> why is it going so fast bro like it's like i try to scale it so it, like it was perfectly like because i do pictures and stuff too so like i was trying to get yeah. just the avatar to be focused um and this is before i figured out the avatar like fo off focus thing um which yeah i've watched those videos too and i still to this day there's times where i'm like oh yep i gotta rewatch it because i don't remember how to do this or i'll just experiment with the figurations Dang. and you know just try to figure things out um but with that you know it, it's vrc lens is definitely a definitely a useful tool to say the least um for sure so with that in mind um you know as this episode's being recorded uh, currently on your channel, your most viewed vid is uh, the Boy Kisser Unite uh, video. So I have to ask, um, what what led you to make that video out of curiosity? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> the story goes like this. I was chilling or uh, like I, I do this thing sometimes where like I go to random world for no purpose at all. Just to like chill out there, observe people, see what's funny or whatnot, you know, brainstorm, get some video ideas going. And then I stumbled on this dude and he had like this pixel boy kisser avatar. I'm like, whoa, I've never seen that before. And then when I went up to him, I tripped him or had like a tripping animation. 
and I saw him hit the ground. I'm like, sir, are you okay? And uh, he, he's like, his last dying breath. I was like, can I clone your avatar before you die? He's like, like, sure, man. And then I cloned it, tripped him one more time, and then left the world. <laughs> I had to throw that part in. <laughs> but yeah, I saw the avatar, and then I noticed like a lot of videos on VR chat is like avatar funny moments. And I'm like, sure, let's take a crack at it. It was literally like my first time. I saw the avatar. I'm like, you know, VR chat's mainly populated by furries, funny enough. Like a lot of the worlds that are like really popular worlds are by furries. So I was like, you know what? Might not be a bad idea. And then I get like, I don't get a team. I go by myself and I just go world to world goofing off with people using a lot of the different toggles. They had like a slapping one. So I'd go up to people. I'd be like, whoa, nice view. And then I, I'd walk up and they'd do a little slapping sound. Like I would just goof off with it the whole time. And eventually once. So I post a video. I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was going to be like another video. I was already thinking of like other videos in my mind after I posted it. I go to sleep. I wake up. And for like, I feel like it's like every YouTuber's dream. Because I don't know if you have like notifications turned on from YouTube or not. But when I woke up, I had like 40 comments. And like, I was scrolling through them. I'm like, oh my God, is this what being a YouTuber feels like? Like, I just, I scroll through and I'm like hearting all of them. I'm like commenting. I'm like, oh my God, this is freaking cool. And it just, it made me feel like a lot of my efforts were finally paying off. Like it felt good. It, it genuinely felt good. I loved every second of it. Would I, funny enough though, would I ever do another video like that? My friends tell me to do it a lot, and I'm just like, I don't really think so. Because don't get me wrong, I love that video. Like, it's one of my most viewed videos, and it's really fun. But when I think of VR chat, I always, or like when I look up VR chat, I always see like a lot of avatar creations, a lot of funny avatar moments. It's not bad. Like, it's really good, and it's obviously working for them. But for me personally, when I think about VR chat, it's more like a you and me hanging out kind of thing, and like, Go in the different worlds of your friend group and whatnot. The avatars always came third for me. It was never really on my mind. So I want like a lot of my videos to be more like, yo, we went out, did something stupid, or we went out and like played a game world or host a competition and whatnot with full body dancers. Like, I just, I want to bring more of that, which I might still do avatar stuff in the future, but like, I mainly just want to bring that kind of energy. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I was going to say, cause, uh, some of your other videos included like, uh, asking if I remember correctly, uh, asking like has been hotel fans, what their favorite song was. Um, you know, yeah. and there's, there's a few different types of not just VR chat, but in general, you'll have your content creators that go out and do that type of stuff. So what, what, uh, you know, was there any inspiration behind you, you know, going to, I think what, what was it? A hundred? A hundred has been hotel fans. What was was there any inspiration behind that video at all? Honestly, so I I was in my head. I was watching. I just finished watching Has Been Hotel, and I'm just like, whoa! Like more than anything's my favorite song. Like I will defend this song till I die. And I was like, wait a minute, how could I like make this into a video? Because I think it's funny as heck. So I'm like, hold on, what if I went around and like, i did that stupid thing they do in tv where like they, you sit down in your bed and you're like spitballing ideas to yourself mm-hmm. and then i would take like a part of it and be like has been hotel um asking people their favorite song and i'd be like good this is good work johnson good stuff now well, how are we <laughs> gonna finish it and then like i'm like asking a hundred people and i'm like you know what hell yeah man and then i high five myself and then it kind of just went from there Fair enough. Yeah. So obviously, you know, with big series like that, you know, there's, excuse me, there is so much, you know, to delve into, you know, is that something, is that a type of content that, you know, you were, you know, looking forward to making again at some point, or was it just kind of one of an uh, one-off type of thing? Honestly, I would love to do like, when it comes to just Hasman Hotel kind of videos, Besides the fact, like, they do, like, really good YouTube <laughs> stuff. But, like, I would love to, like, get a team of, like, the whole cast together. Go around worlds, goofing off. Like, I have a lot of, like, funny ideas for just has been alone. But I also would love to do more videos, like, me going around, asking people a question. Like, insert, like, 100 people or 200. Hell, I'd stay up to, like, 8 in the morning asking people. I do not mind. I just, 
I love talking to people. Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure you go check that out. I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the main point of this platform. It's a it's a social platform at the end of the day. You know, it's just a game. Yeah. You know, one of the you know, one of the things I think, you know, you could benefit from, you know, because you already went to the has been hotel, uh, you know, maybe future down the line, just go into different types of VR chat communities or fandoms within VR chat and just kind of see what's all out there. You know, just, you know, because you did you did the has been one. But there's like, oh, God, just to so name so many communities, too, too many, you know, uh, there's yeah. I, we could literally make an entire list, you know, just explaining, you know, a good portion of them. And that's not, you know, there's spinoff communities for those, too. And it's it's a whole nightmare. <laughs> it's a whole nightmare yeah. and a half, you know, but it, it kind of proves that, you know, the platform itself is realistically infinite. You know, there's no infinite. Yeah, there's no end, you know, because if if one, you know, for example, if one community ends, there will always be somebody or a group of somebody to take up the throne. You know, it's yeah, there's always going to be people that appreciate, you know, a certain fandom, you know, and it's just kind of nuts to think about, you know, you, not to mention Jeez. if VR chat as a platform became more. I don't want to say mainstream, mainstream, but yeah, I see. I, I was thinking mainstream, but I don't know if that's the right word. Um, more prevalent uh, when it comes to the gaming yeah. community, you know, e easily, you know, it could become more infinite than it ever was. You know, as you probably noticed, um, you've been on the platform for a while now. Um, every New Year's, they hit more and more and more concurrent players Play. every single year you know nine times out of ten and yes i am going to call vr chat out for this i mm, every year it seems like there's uh, an over max capacity on the platform itself and all the servers go down on new year's eve it's happened a few times <laughs> um history will repeat itself unless if they fix it but not the point um but <laughs> you know eventually right you know i would love to see you know i would love to see like a million players all on vr chat you all know, at once at all at once you know that would be amazing yeah. and astonishing to see you know as small as it was when it first started out to where it is now it's a definitely a massive you know difference you know, it's definitely one of those things that yeah. you just got to hope that it just keeps continuing to grow. Um, you know, and speaking of that, you know, with with how many episodes or not episodes, sorry, with how many videos you have put out, um, was there ever a video? I know there was one in particular you mentioned earlier that you're like, you're like, oh, it's it's awful. Like, I regret it. You know, what <laughs> what uh, what are some examples of like? some um i don't want to say like bad videos because that sounds rude as shit but like what are some videos no, dude, in, bad video in in your opinion you know what are some examples of some of like the worst content you put out in your opinion oh uh, man uh let's see <laughs> bro all right so I, whenever i think of that i think of two videos that are just objectively bad and i don't know why i thought of it but i did and i don't regret it because like i still you know stayed up a while edited all that good so there's still love towards it but like i i could have done better i really dropped the ball there two of them the first one is i made this video where even i forget the title sometimes it's like the five rules of what full body users should do now that they have full body and like i went through i'm like number one kick people make sure you kick everyone kick your friends kick people from instances kick everyone now that you have full body <laughs> and like i feel like <laughs> from like a funny haha -ha moment like there was definitely those but then i feel like i could have executed it better like now that i have a better camera i got people to work with now i know more people in that field 
I feel like I could do that so much better than what I could do. But I was just so excited because I thought about it. I'm like, yo, no one's ever done that before. Let's do it. And then the second one, it's not bad in a sense of like how it came out. It's just bad because I was just like so like nervous the whole time. It was the I asked 50 people their ERP body count. I am not proud of that. I'm going to say that from the get go. I'm not proud of that video. But is it <laughs> funny? Yes, because like I know there's like that side of VR chat, obviously, and like people like what they like. I ain't going to bash anyone for that. But like going around at like four in the morning to random people and then <laughs> I would act like I was I, I felt like I was a kitten. I'd be like, sir. Sir, what is your uh, ERP body? Uh, like, I was nervous because, like, I, bro, I, I, I like, I don't know how to bring that up in a casual way, bro. Like, like, dude, I mean, he's never met me before. I've never met him. I'm just like, yo, how many people you fucked in VR? But like, I don't know how to bring it up casually. So a lot <laughs> of the footage that got cut and that you didn't see was just me, like shyly like oh you don't want to tell me okay that's cool or oh it's zero nice me too yeah <laughs> but, like, <laughs> dude, i was just nervous wreck bro i like i don't regret it for the quality i regret it because like maybe i shouldn't have done it but i still think it's funny but i'm just like maybe i shouldn't have Definitely a definitely a base type of content <laughs> to say the least. Um, For sure. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> something that I think about, and I, I'm curious on your opinion on this. Um, something that I think about is like if you translated the content that you're doing in VR and took it to real life, would it do good, or would you get the <laughs> shit beat out of you? You know, like I. <laughs> I would. Um, I'm not. I think about that often. Funny enough, like if I was to do in real life stuff compared to just VR, because I know VR is kind of like in real life, but you know I can't like do that to people. But I, I probably would get jumped behind a Seven Eleven at most. Like people would <laughs> not be willing to answer that question at all, and that's fair to them. But, like I would probably whoop my own ass if I saw myself doing that. Like, there's definitely, like, VR chat privilege at its finest right there. Fair enough, yeah. So, <laughs> it's funny, you know, <laughs> speaking, of like, speaking of, like, based content, you know, was there ever a point um, in your content creation where things may have gotten a little bit too far out of hand uh, when making a video or, you know, posting a video or et cetera? Oh man, <laughs> the things get far. All right, so I have a lot of examples, but the main one, funny enough, was two of them. It was the Hasman Hotel video and then the body count one. With the body count one, again, I didn't show it because, like, obviously, but I went up to this one person, right? And, like, they seemed chill. Like, they were just sitting at a mirror, you know, having a good time, laughing it up with their friends. And I'm like, hey, man, you want to, like, answer a question real quick? And he's like, sure, dude. So then I, I bring him. And then that dude's boyfriend comes. And I don't know if they had, like, an argument beforehand. Because he came in guns blazing he's like who the hell is this who is this bitch and i'm there like bro like, like i i just wanted a question like we're almost <laughs> done you could have him afterwards and he's like no i know you're cheating on me and i'm like i'm in the middle of this telemundo episode and i'm not gonna <laughs> lie it, it wasn't my finest moment but like like i've been called a bitch too many times so i'm just like yeah this is my hubby now Snookums, and then that dude like <laughs> goes out. He rages. That dude loses it on me. He's like, "You're a fucking bitch. I hate you. I'm gonna like flag your content." I'm like, "Cool, man. Nice. It was nice knowing you for real. Uh, call me later, babe." That's why I looked at the dude <laughs> and I walked away. I was an asshole. I I won't doubt that. I shouldn't have done that, for, especially since like you know you gotta have like a high ground on stuff like that. But like. He was an asshole to me. And like, I didn't know how to respond. And now it's kind of just came out. Fair the enough. second thing. <laughs> the second thing was the Hasman Hotel video. Um, I don't usually like. 
I don't know how to put this. I don't usually like asking the people the same question twice. That's like my biggest fear. I always have like, because it's multiple different worlds. It's like multiple different times in the day. So it's right. like scary. But then this one person, oh, bro, they, they hurt my insecurity a bit. I went up to them and I'm like, hey, would you like to be a part of this video? And he's like, bot, you already asked me this AI. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> bro, because I already did it. Like, that was my biggest fear coming into this. Like, I re-asked someone. And it sounds so small and dumb, but it scared me, man, because, like, I didn't want an answer like that. And that dude called me an AI bot, bro. It <laughs> shattered my heart for a bit. Fair enough. No, I... Yeah, I guess with those type of videos, if you're going out in public lobbies in different times, you know, especially if you don't friend these people, you don't know, you know, yeah. you, you might, especially if it's those people that go to the same world every single day, you know, 24 seven, you know, there's definitely a chance. For that. I never even thought of that. That's that's an interesting take. Um, sorry that you got called an AI <laughs> bot, but I mean, hey, you know, because <laughs> like... bro, I don't blame him. It was funny now, but at the time I was hurt because I would go up and I would say the same thing. Would you like to be a part of my video where you answer a small question? I would say it just like that in that voice. And when the minute he called me that, bro, it hurt. Like it did, bro. <laughs> I, like I, I sat there in my home world and I, I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I'm not an AI, right? <laughs> like I had a heart to heart with myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that's that that yeah. I could definitely see how that could uh that could hurt. <laughs> Especially yeah. it's just a it's a it's a funny moment, you know, looking back on it probably now, but yeah, yeah. No, in the moment that, that probably that probably fucking hurt. It um, stung, bro. It hurt, bro. So I guess one of my other questions uh, in that regard. Um, so when you, when you make videos, you know, it, YouTube's your main platform. Um, have you ever thought, yeah. have you ever thought about, you know, going to other like, you know, platforms like, you know, I, I know TikTok's at the current moment as this is being recorded, yeah. uh, TikTok's on its way out if they don't sell. Um, I'm not going to get into that. That's, not what this episode's about but have you thought about doing yeah. like shorts related content you know maybe for like uh x or blue sky or youtube shorts uh or any of those other platforms uh, funny enough even when they, i have like two opinions on that when it comes to like making content for tiktok or youtube shorts i always felt i felt conflicted because it's like i learned how like tiktok really did ruin the attention spans of other people and it kind of made me feel a resentment towards TikTok a bit. Like, I've never even downloaded TikTok. Like, I, I've never seen TikTok at all. And, like, but from the things I see about my friends and, like, my parents even use TikTok. And it's, like, not them, but, like, the attention span of people just because of TikTok now is, like, a millisecond. And I feel like it kind of translates to YouTube as well, where it's, like... If you're not having something constantly happening in a video or like changing the angles or changing up like the way the camera looks or adding funny effects, people will just lose retention. And that's been like my biggest struggle where like I'm trying to work around and like study different ways to keep people's retention. And I feel like TikTok kind of is the reason why I have to do more research, which isn't bad. Like TikTok, it is what it is. You know, it definitely did help out a lot of people too. But like, I I don't know. I just, I never really thought about it. I kind of see YouTube as like my only, like my baby, like I love you so much kind of thing. But eventually I probably will. I don't doubt it. Like, especially if I make like a lot of videos and like I can correlate it to YouTube shorts or take like a funny moment and post it there. Like I'm definitely going to go on that wave. But for right now, probably not. I don't really see myself doing it in the future. No, that's fair. Um, so I will say the only the only rebuttal I would have to that, right? I wouldn't say yeah. TikTok is the reason why uh, attention spans are getting smaller. Because if you remember, right, you know, it wasn't originally TikTok. You know, it was Musically, and mm -hmm. before that, musically, even yeah. before that even happened, Vine. you had Vine, and before that, you know, you had you know other platforms as well. You know, shorts form content has been around for a very long time. You know, and granted, yeah. you could technically, there's YouTube videos out there 
that are not in a vertical format that you could consider as U- YouTube shorts. So, you know, it's just, I, I think it's more of a matter of like, you know, people's attention spans have been, you know, they've been wanting to expect more, you know, in a short amount yeah. of time. And, you know, it, I would say definitely those platforms had something to say about it, but ugh, excuse me. But to say that TikTok, you know, started, it's kind of a, you know, yeah. it doesn't really yeah, make sense. Yeah. It doesn't really make sense because there was platforms before it that had the same thing. Before it's, that and all that. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing with like, it's the definitely whole, like a weird thing for me. Yeah. No, I was going to say, you know, it's the whole, you know, it's the whole meta thing, you know, with Facebook and, you know, before that it was like, uh, what was it what was between myspace and facebook there was a i guess technically twitter was in there too but it was like twitter yeah. and facebook and before that it was like myspace and bebo and then before that it was like <laughs> you know go way far back and we're all the way back in like aol you know and chat rooms and whatnot so Dude, those are the good days <laughs> I will, you know, that's the point, right? Like everything has derived from something before it. Um, yeah, you know, so really, the if you want to really say something started of it, the internet is what started it all. Google, when it was made in 1998, was the start of it all. You know, not to say Google, uh, Google, please don't come after me by saying this. Um, Google, you know, becoming the main search engine. Uh, in 1998, <clears throat> definitely expanded everyone's horizons in you know the World Wide Web. Uh, this is a very weird tangent. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but but <laughs> long story short, right? Uh, to, I I wouldn't blame TikTok 100 percent on that. You know when there were other platforms before it. Uh, yeah, definitely shared blame there. Yeah, I, I was saying, no. <laughs> if you really think about it, right, Vine was only, what, six, seven seconds? So if six anything, seconds long. Yeah, if anything, we kind of improved from Vine to TikTok. You know, at least TikTok, you, you know, they they actually promote more minute or longer clips in an ironic sense, which, you know, for being a short, really? f- yeah, they, uh, they put it on their platform like, oh, we're going to promote more in the algorithm for videos that are longer than a minute. Um, which is very interesting to say the least, but, um, back to, you know, back to you specifically, um, it, it, it's definitely one of those things that, you know, especially cause there's moments when, and at least when I record, um, there's moments that yeah. may not make sense to make into a video, but it'd just be a really funny bit. So that's at least in my opinion, that's why I make, like, I'm, I, yeah, that's why I make content, like TikTok content, you know, because there's there's gonna be those funny moments, you know. Um oh, yeah. But but yeah, so that's that's one of the reasons why I was asking, you know, if there's any thought, you know, because you've you've done a bunch of recordings now, you know. Surely at some point there was probably a bit or something that you weren't recording and you'd be like, Oh man, that'd be funny, but it wouldn't quite make a video, if that makes sense. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, like, yeah, like, you think it's something funny, but then, you know, it's no way that's, like, even a minute long kind of a video, and it's like, oh, what do I do? I thought about doing, like, like uh, funny, like, ten minutes of funny skits kind of thing, but even those are, like, different, and I'd have to look up a lot of things that go into that area as well. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, yeah, man, like, that's, that's... The crazy thing about content creation is we're always constantly growing and we're uh, we're changing how we do things on almost a daily basis, if not like a weekly basis. You know, that's why I like interviewing people when it comes to content creation, because I can kind of get in the head of other content creators and kind of understand what other content creators, what makes their gears work, what inspires them, what what keeps them going, you know, um. You know, yeah. which speaking of which, I want to thank you, Roy, for coming on the podcast. <laughs> it's it's been a blast. Thank you for having me, bro. This has been mega fun. 
Yeah, absolutely. So as you know, uh, for the end of my episodes, uh, I always give the chance for the creators to essentially let people know where they can find them, you know, any platforms or projects you want to, you know, talk about. Um, this will be your time to shine. Uh, so where exactly can, you know, the listening audience find you at? You could find me at www.pb. No, I'm kidding. Um, you can find me on YouTube at King Roy Aiko. I'm working on some pretty funny videos. I have a couple of challenges coming up, a couple of like group projects coming up. I would really appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe. Also, like and subscribe to this channel, please. I love this podcast. It's been great. Uh, you might let me come back one day. <laughs> but yeah. but <laughs> but yeah though no, um as roy so delicately put it um you know i want to thank you all so much for watching episode 12 of the nova notes podcast uh featuring roy here uh if you liked the episode and enjoyed what you watched uh please make sure to leave a comment hit that like button smack that subscribe button you know if you're coming back to watch some of the other podcast episodes why not you're already coming back to the platform anyways. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Take it easy and peace.